I, you know what, it's funny. I actually think it was just really like learning how to um, play the guitar, learn other people's songs, and then just kind of naturally wanting to uh, like write my own songs. Amazing. Um, my name's Adam, by the way, and I appreciate you doing this. Yes. Nice to meet you. I've been watching some of your podcasts, so I'm familiar with you. Oh, very cool. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah. So first off, where are you in LA, correct? Or from LA? Are you from LA or no? Yes. Are we starting? Is this officially beginning? Yeah, I just kind of go into it. Okay. <laughs> Unless you <laughs> want me. Yeah. <laughs> can we, yeah, can we, sorry, can we just start over? Of course. Okay, cool. All sorry. Right, so no worries. Um, again, my name is Adam and this is about you and your journey in music and how you got to where you are now. Hi, Adam. So nice to meet you. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Uh, first off, where were you born and raised? I saw you, you were from LA or you, did you were you born and raised in LA? Yeah, um, I'm from Los Angeles. And I was born here and I lived, I've been living here on and off since I was young, but I went to like school, uh, high school and college out on the East Coast. Okay, so you went to you even went to high school in the East Coast. Wow. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm from Southern. I'm from San Diego. So I was, I I know, yeah, yeah. I know, yeah Southern California quite quite well. So how long were you in LA, all the way up until high school? Yeah. So I went to I actually went to a boarding school for high school. So I was up. Uh, I was in LA until eighth grade, and then ninth grade to twelfth grade, I went to a boarding school, uh, and in New Hampshire, and then. I went to college out there as well. And then I came back here to work on music. So I've been okay. here. Pretty did much. you go to, by choice to New Hampshire? Or no, I did actually. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we'll get into I, that. I, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, <laughs> well, sure. Okay. So first off, talk to me about being born and raised in Los Angeles, what part of LA? Um, I'm from like Los Angeles, Los Angeles, a uh, small suburb, like 30 minutes outside the city, but yeah, I'm pretty much from the city. So. Okay. And how yeah. did you get into music? I got into music because uh, I guess like when I was like eight years old or something like that, my mom, she enrolled me into a like a children's choir. Mm -hmm. And then from there on, it was like in school choirs and then acapella singing groups and basically it was like singing from a really young age. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, I also like took piano lessons and guitar lessons. And so I was always really into like singing and and. Uh, music and so it was something that I did when I was really young okay and you yeah. obviously can continue doing that were you how old are yeah. you when you learned piano was that the first instrument you learned yeah that was the first instrument I learned I was probably around the same age I started singing playing piano around that age and then I, I picked up the guitar when I was about 13 mm -hmm. and that's when I really started like writing songs and um wanting to actually like make music I okay. actually, I think I knew pretty young that I wanted to do music. So, um, was there something yeah. that like sticks out in your mind? Like, oh, I went to this concert and I saw this person, and then I was like, I need to do this. I, you know what? It's funny. I actually think it was just really like learning how to um, play the guitar, learn other people's songs, and then just kind of naturally wanting to uh, like write my own songs. Mm -hmm. It came, it came like really naturally to me, and I and I really liked it. So I kind of just started writing my own songs like right away after I knew how to play a couple chords. So yeah. Were you so sharing those songs with anyone or is it kind of your thing? Like just something that you did for yourself? I, no, I did. I started, I mean, in high school is when I kind of started, you know, writing songs and like performing and playing them for people. Um, in addition to like being like in an acapella singing group. And then I also played the harp. I was learning harp as oh, well. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I was, yeah, I was just like really into music when I was younger. So um, yeah, it was, it was like a really, it was a really fun outlet for me. I always, I always just really loved singing actually, so. Mm -hmm. Was that what took you to New Hampshire then? Or like, uh, was like, so, why, did, why there? Like, tell me about that, unless you don't feel like getting into it. I'm just curious. Um, no, it's fine. Uh, yeah, no, I went to school out there just because um, I was actually like, you know, pretty studious as a kid and I wanted mm -hmm. to go. Um, I kind of just wanted to get outside of LA, get outside of California and experience different parts of the country. And my parents um, were willing to send me to the East Coast. And so I went to a boarding school out there for four years and I loved it. That's actually really where I feel like um, I started my whole music journey writing and performing and stuff so 
Yeah, what was that? I mean, what were you, 13, 14 years old, and you move all the way across the whole country, and you're living almost by yourself i mean a boarding school what you're living on on campus and everything correct yeah we know we lived in dorms we um you know we had like these like uh they they had them obviously separated like you know boys and girls were in separate dorms but it was really cool because you know we got to hang out in this sort of like unusual environment and so the people that um i became friends with we became we were like sisters we became really close because Mm -hmm. we were like growing up together but without like our families and parents around us so it was actually a really, it was a really cool experience. I really um, enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, I would imagine that you're kind of, you're with these people all the time, right? I mean, is there, like, how did it, how is it structured as far as, like, your free time, like, outside of class? Like, when you, are you done at 3.30 and you can kind of just hang out with your roommates or your friends, like, about the the campus? Like, how does that even work? So the school that I went to was, like, really academically rigorous. We had school mm-hmm. six days a week. We had Oh, school, like yeah we had school half days Wednesdays and half days Saturdays it was like kind of based I think on the French system mm-hmm. um so we were like always in school we had like school from like morning till evening and then like half days Wednesdays and Saturdays and then the other half of the day we were doing like sports or extracurriculars so they did they just kind of like jam-packed our schedules it was like it was actually kind of intense but it was yeah. it was a really great experience yeah I mean did you have any time to like <laughs> I mean, uh, on a weekend, say a Sunday, if you don't have anything going on, were, were you able to leave the school? Like, uh, what was that like? Are you kind um, of, you're there, <laughs> you're there for four years and you don't go. Well, I mean, I think there was, there was some free time, but not a lot. Okay. So, I mean, I think most of it was really kind of like, everyone was just really busy with like all their extracurricular activity. I also like ran track and field and uh, okay. um, yeah, I was like, I would, we were just really bu- And, you know, I was like learning all these different instruments and I was in this group, you know, everyone was just super busy. Um, but I think, yeah, there was some free time here and there, you know, like for vacations, I would come home mm-hmm. um, for like winter and summer and stuff, but no, it was That's a, cool. it was a really, it was a really uh, special and memorable experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And th- with- yeah, and that's actually really where I started to, um, uh, to just I feel like the music aspect of me started to come out so were you sharing know. songs with people there like I mean yeah like, yeah okay so tell me about we, that we, we just had um you know we had like different opportunities for us to like perform and stuff um we had uh this thing called evening prayer which was like mm-hmm. this um once a week uh, it was like this really cool experience where you could go into this church and people would um you know speak their poetry or sing their songs but it was like in, in pitch black <laughs> oh wow yeah and you would go so you there didn't, like did you know who was coming up there or if you only if you recognize their voice yeah not really you would just like and every time it was like different people so like sometimes I would I would do that and I would perform in front of everyone wow. but it was really cool because it was like a, it was just like candlelight it was it was super dark and it was mm-hmm. um yeah, it was kind of magical actually so, that is that's really yeah. a, a cool experience what was yeah. were you terrified the first time you had to do that or were you pretty confident in performing in front of people I, I mean, mean to go in and be like okay I'm gonna if, you, if I'm th- I'm what I'm picturing is like you know candlelight dead black uh, dead you know dark everyone's sitting yeah. there just fully just paying attention to every note and everything you're gonna be yeah. doing like was that terrifying to go up there and be like okay here we go like it's very it sounds like a very intimate situation you know I actually loved it okay I thought it was so cool because you had like all these people in a room and it was like super dark and and everyone was just really present and mm-hmm. so and I think it didn't even really matter like what whether it was good like people weren't like there to like judge in a way they were just there to kind of have this experience Mm -hmm. so I felt for me it felt very like liberating for me because also they couldn't really see you so it was sort of like you know you're you're kind of hidden from they can't they you know it was was dark so right um, right yeah so there that that was actually and it was called evening prayer which is funny because later on down the line I ended up um, putting out like a a live EP called evening prayer just sort of uh, as a uh as a what do you call that like a uh i forget, forget the word but as a like a kind of like nostalgia a yeah oh, the okay. nostalgia towards that time sure okay so yeah yeah that's really cool so, it's funny you're asking me this because it's like all these memories are starting to 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 bubble back up to the surface mm-hmm. but i actually haven't thought about it in a while so 
I love that. That's why I love doing yeah. this. Just kind of seeing how, you know, you, you did this and everyone's got their own story. I love, I love that. Yeah. Um, okay. So you, school, high school at this boarding school is really where you started to kind of shape your, your sound maybe, and you just like getting comfortable performing in front of people and you're writing your own songs and then yeah. how did, how do you get like validation that this is something you want to do? And are you performing outside of the school or are you mainly playing to people at the school? Are they telling you that you're doing like, they like what you're doing? I, I know there's 50,000 questions there, but I'm just, <laughs> I'll let you take it as you. <laughs> as yeah, you know. no, no, no. Um, uh, well, so I think, so I guess like those kind of formative years, those like high school mm -hmm. years was really when it sort of all started for me. But I remember, you know, like, like, um, like even in college and stuff, like I, I took like a summer and I just like played at a lot of open mics and I played at a lot of different, like in New York city, actually, I was in New York city for a summer and I just decided that somewhere I was going to really try and, um, you know, uh, play my music for people, meet people. And so I ended up, uh, I ended up uh, in that summertime, actually, that sort of led me to like my first publishing deal. But, um, oh, wow. And this is yeah. out after high school. Yeah. This was kind of like, um, like right towards the end of college, right before I graduated college, but kind of around that time period, I was, I was, um, yeah, I had, I'd, I'd written songs and I was more, um, ready to try and see if I could do something with it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I went to New York city and I, just started to play around a lot and um, just like play the open mic circuit. Did you go to college for music? I did and I actually studied uh, English literature. I went to college for literature. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting that just because you, you, it sounds like you were a very studious student and uh, <laughs> you went to the school for, you know, to, be, to get a different education and then you wanted to become a musician, which is awesome. But like, yeah. was that kind of a path that, was that just kind of happened naturally or like like what were you like like what was the the plan was it always to do music and then if it was and what were you going to get from going to the boarding school well i think that you know so my you know i'm korean i'm korean american mm -hmm. my parents immigrated here from korea and like a lot of traditional asian parents obviously i think they didn't really want me to go into music okay <laughs> so i you know i was I, I and i also wanted to get a good education so i was kind of doing the things that i felt were kind of expected of me but at the same time sure. I always kind of wanted to do music so I was oh, sort of okay. kind of trying to do both mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, in the end, sense. yeah but in the end the music won out and so and I just you know at some point I was like okay I'm just going to go for the music so um so yeah I mean it, it led to some you know some contention between my family and I but yeah I mean I think that it's it's an interesting path that I went down because I was yeah I was pretty studious and I was I was kind of like a you know I was a, I was a nerdy, you know, I like I like to learn and I was, I was right. into that, but yeah, uh -huh. no, but music really felt like my calling. So mm -hmm. I decided to, to go down that path with, and your, then, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say like, when you're going to college, is that, did you choose that because of songwriting or like, you know, English literature, like learning how to write, was it more catered towards, okay, if I, I I'll, I'll learn, you know, how to write, you know, better or whatever yeah even though that's a terrible sentence um <laughs> but i could use that in my songwriting skills yeah i think probably like subconsciously that was probably mm. one of the reasons but i actually just really love to read and okay. it was just something that i really enjoy doing um and i think that um yeah, I, I kind of at that point i'd already knew that i was already planning on doing music so mm -hmm. my major wasn't that important to important. me but but yeah but I, I love to read so okay and so well. you decide what when you when you're done you're like okay I'm gonna go to New York and I'm just gonna pursue music yeah I was I, I gave myself a window of time to see if I could get a record deal and see if I could get signed um so in that window of time that was part of the thing where I went and I played at a bunch of open mics in New York City and and then I ended up um meeting uh I ended up meeting basically the, um, this person named Charles Koppelman, who um, back in the day, he like he had discovered Tracy Chapman, who I wow. was a big fan of. Mm -hmm. And he yeah, he was like the he, he was um, running, I think, like EMI Records at some point. And he had a publishing company. And so some somehow I came across across his path. And uh, that's kind of where it all started, like in terms of like 
professionally. <laughs> right. No. Yeah. So I got so, a publishing deal with him and then he ended up helping me get a record deal. Um, okay. With so a, with a pub, I was gonna say when you, when it came to getting that publishing deal, was it something that you were like giving him songs that you had written or did he come see you at an open mic and was like, okay, I really love what you're doing. Let's work together. Like how did that conversation begin? Yeah. I, I mean, I, um, to be honest, I don't remember all the details, but I had written some songs and he had heard them. And then I think as we worked together, I'd, I wrote some more songs, um, along the way, but, uh, yeah, he signed me, I think mostly cause you know, I hadn't developed really a following. I was just sort of, um, starting to get myself out there. So he really signed me, I think on my songwriting ability. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, yeah. And then he ended up, um, helping me get a record deal. He, uh, it's actually a really interesting story. Um, at that time, I, you know, I was just literally like on the subway with my guitar case and just showing up in people's offices and playing for like the presidents of different labels, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, just like for like their office meeting, you know, like, um, them and their assistants and they're in their, I, I played for like, yeah, a bunch, like a, a few different label heads, uh, and just like whipped out my guitar and just started like playing in the office, <laughs> like, <laughs> like acoustic, like no microphones. Oh yeah. I, I worked in radio for a long time and we'd have those situations. It'd be like, Oh, so-and-so is going to come in. And then we'd be like in a mu music meeting and like somebody would yeah. show up and play. <laughs> exactly. Guitar, exactly. Course, in the conference yeah. room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I did, a, I did a bunch of those. Okay. Um, and then I ended up getting, uh, I ended up get, getting a deal with us with Sony, with Epic records. Wow. So yeah, so that's what was my first record deal. And um, and then I came back out to LA to work on the record. And uh, that's kind of yeah. And what year was that when you put the record out? I don't even remember. It was a while ago. Um it was it was many years ago. Was it the one that had <laughs> I do on it? Was that that album or is this later? No, that's actually later. That's actually okay. later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This was my this was my de debut album on Sony, and I worked with a producer named Glenn Ballard. Uh, who lived out in LA. Um, mm -hmm. I, I actually met with a few different producers, but I decided um, we had to, we kind of hit it off. So we decided to do a record together. So we worked on that record uh, and I put that out. Yeah. Okay. And from that record, did you like, what did Epic and in, in that label do for your size from kind of helping you with the record? Like you go on tour or what, like what yeah, was the relationship um, there? Yeah. We, I mean, we did, we did like a, a promotional run. Um, mm -hmm. I, I played, I opened up for some people, you know, they were able to get some of my songs licensed. Um, we did some publicity and, and then I ended up actually going out to, to Korea as well and releasing the album in Korea and wow. touring there and performing there. Yeah. So, um, it was interesting being on a major label. I would say, you know, I'm, you know, the, after that experience, I decided to go independent mm -hmm. and create my own label. So I created my own record. A label called Collective Records, and I've been putting out music on Collective Records ever since. So it's interesting to kind of um, to be uh, to have experience like the major label, but then also be doing it independently. There's pros and cons to both. Mm -hmm. um, there was some great things that Sony offered, uh, and then I think there's also some great things that are a result of me going independent. Right. I mean, like uh, a song like I do, having 50 million. 53 million streams on Spotify, like something like that. I mean, that's an, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's like an independent release, right? Yeah. So after the Sony record, I just basically just started putting music out independently and, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just like owning all the music, producing all the music or, or collaborating and, you know, just putting it all together, putting all the visuals together. Really, everything was, you know, everything's been super DIY ever since then. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been interesting to kind of see. I've just been kind of like quietly doing it though. Like I haven't, um, like since I've been independent, I haven't necessarily like performed as much in the public, but it's interesting to see how the music has sort of seeped into the world, whether it's been through syncs or through streaming or and playlists mm -hmm. and things like that. I don't know. It's kind of funny. It's like, I feel like I'll write a song and then I put it out to the world and it kind of sort of takes a life of its own. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's yeah, it's, it's, it's been a really interesting journey actually so far. Mm -hmm. Cause I, like I don't even know how I do got that. I mean, it was literally just like a, one of the songs on my uh, independent album called the Backman tapes. Mm -hmm. 
and it got licensed a bunch of times and then it ended up on a bunch of streaming playlists and it just sort of took off but like not really because of my marketing or promotional efforts but I still think, i mean that's yeah. that's wild to to see yeah. that many streams on a song i mean was that something that it just kind of came and you're like oh my gosh like what what is happening <laughs> it's just <laughs> kind of been slowly growing slowly over growing yeah it's okay. been like a i mean i so for me like i've been independent and i've been putting my music out but i would say that like right like right now with this new album that i have is really mm -hmm. me uh, putting myself out there on a whole other level kind of okay. reminding me of when i was on my major label days but for a while i've just kind of you know uh been like quietly doing it because i yeah I, I feel like um because i'm sometimes a little bit on the shyer side so mm -hmm. i feel that it's uh it's been like a, a a journey for me to put myself out there more and more mm -hmm. but i want to share my music with with more people and i want to you know um I want to reach more people. And so I'm trying to put myself out there a bit more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you do it again, right? After that first record, you have another song called Here With Me that also has over 50 million streams. Like, what, like are these things that, like, were, is that another situation where it's kind of like a little slow burn and eventually just kept growing and growing and growing and growing and kind of took a life yeah. of its own as well? Yeah, I feel like ever since the Sony record, ever since I've been putting music out independently, it's just certain songs have... I think resonated with people that song in particular got licensed on a show called the blacklist oh, okay um, and uh and i think from there it kind of it just sort of went viral mm -hmm. um and then it got licensed on other shows and then it got picked up on playlists and things like that but yeah i mean it's it's been really it's been really cool actually to see how these songs make their way out into the world mm -hmm. and you have a your new record that's out it, the, I. I was reading that you've been what studying meditation and that kind of like, is that a piece of this record? Like, I guess, tell me about yeah. the, this album. Yeah. So, okay. So this new album that I, uh, that I put out, it's called invisible love mm -hmm. and it kind of chronicles like a period of time where I sort of went on this like inner journey, um, of like trying to figure out, uh, what else is out there besides like the modern world. So I went on this, like, inner journey of like of like reflection and introspection and I ended up traveling to different places and studying different things like meditation studying uh different modes of healing like sound therapy wow uh, I, yeah it was sort of, sort of chronicles this this spiritual journey that I've that I've been on and um uh and it and it I think is a you know it's like this I guess we go through phases in our life right so mm -hmm. we have and I feel like the phase that I've been in or been coming out of is this phase of really trying to understand the world and myself from like a much different perspective. And, and so learning, like I, um, I think, I don't know if what you're reading, if you're reading the bio or what you're, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, you know, there was all these really cool experiences that I had. Like, I, yeah, I was, I was just touching up on the bio. I want to, I don't want to tell your story. I wanted to hear what you had to yeah, say about yeah. it. So um, that's just, that's why I was asking a vague question about it. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, um, I mean, I'll, I'll share like, so one of the experiences that I had was where I ended up, I ended up living, um, with, uh, Buddhist monks for a bit in wow. um, France. Have you heard of Plum Village? No, I have not. Do you know who Thich Nhat Hanh is? He actually just passed. Um, but the name is, sounds familiar, but I don't I yeah. wouldn't know anything he's about kind of, He's, he's, he's a he's Vietnamese he's a mm -hmm. he's a Buddhist monk he started uh he's kind of similar to the Dalai Lama he has okay. a, there's a lot of people that um that have uh he's created like uh he created like the largest Buddhist monastery in Europe wow um, in France and uh and he's got other schools but but basically uh, I lived there for a little bit and I lived with the with the monks and the nuns and just trying to understand like their lifestyle, which is, which is so different from what I know and what I've grown up in. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if you, if you know anything about um, this culture, but the people that decide to become monks and nuns, they completely, they give oh, up yeah. every, everything. everything. Right. Yeah. yeah. Even mm -hmm. their like bank accounts, mm -hmm. their, their I IDs and they shave their heads and they basically live wearing like the same simple robes they eat out of one bowl 
Mm-hmm. They, you know, they, they've spent their lives, you know, meditating every day. It's, it's fascinating. And it was actually, it was, it was really, it was really life-changing to kind of mm-hmm. experience um, these different uh, ways of living and different realities. Uh, and just to see also, they're much more connected, you know, they're growing their own food. And they were, um, you know, they were farming and growing their own food and kind of living more uh, closely to the land mm-hmm. and connected more to nature. And so all of these kind of different experiences, I'm just giving you one of many, but all of them uh, just really influenced my music and also my my perspective on, on sure. everything. Yeah. Well, where did the journey begin? Like what and what was it like? OK, I want to do this. <laughs> I'm in Los Angeles. Now I need to go somewhere. And like, do you go to France first? And like, how do you even make that? Do you just walk up to the to the Buddhist temple and say, hey, I want to like come just like live here with you? I mean, I, I don't even know yeah, how to yeah. like begin that. Well, I, I did take some time where I was like living in Europe for a bit. So I did yeah. live like I was living in like France and I was living in Berlin on and off here and there. And, and that was so the when first- I was track of the journey it was the first yeah i first would say leg of so it. i would okay. say that's the first leg i kind of left america went to europe and was living there on and off and from there i kind of like like i went to lord i don't know if you've heard of lord it's a um it's in france i'm it's so a, bad with geography yeah. <laughs> i'm not gonna lie to you <laughs> it's where there was like an apparition of mary and and it's a holy it's a oh yeah, holy yeah okay state. yeah sure i know um, so a that. lot of like catholic Catholics, yeah, there. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not religious per se, but I, I went to all these and I went to Glass. That's awesome. Curry. Yeah, you know, where Stonehenge is, mm-hmm. and the crop circles, obviously the music festival. That's also like a really spiritual area as well. There's a lot of spiritual people living there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I kind of just traveled around and, uh, and um, I think that's sort of where it all began. But it's kind of been like, um, I wouldn't say it's, it's just sort of like, been underneath the surface of everything in the background kind of uh influencing you know I would I would you know take like a trip like I said like go and go and stay with the monks or you know do different things and those things would kind of influence my um my everyday or and so I started learning how to meditate I started learning about mindfulness Mm -hmm. uh, and you know learning about sound therapy and just all these different things (laughs) Tell me about the sound therapy. That's so yeah. uh, interesting to me. Yeah. So, you know, you know, as, as you know, I'm sure you talked to a lot of musicians, you know, obviously music is super healing and it's mm-hmm. like this tool that we can use to help us tap into our own, uh, you know, emotions and feelings. And so I've always known that sound and music is really powerful. And so I started to dig a little deeper and, and, and look at it more intentionally. Like how do you intentionally create more healing with sound? And so I started learning and taking different classes and courses and things um, that that did. And I also experienced it as well. I would go to these like, uh, you know, different um, sound baths, they call them or, you know, sound healings and um, and just like lie there. And you can you can literally like some people I, I can you can literally like feel the vibrations of the sounds like affecting your body. But as you do more like research about it and, and look more into the science, it, it does actually help. Like it helps lower your, um, it helps basically like calm your nervous system and like lower your blood pressure. And like, there's all these different things that happen when you start to work with different um, like intentional sounds and things like that. So I started actually incorporating that into my music as well. Wow. So is it like yeah. what, like certain frequencies will yeah, resonate in certain ways in your body or something? Exactly. There's something called entrainment. So if you hear a frequency, your body will actually like entrain itself to it. Um, and depending on what that frequency is, um, there's it's, yeah, it's, I'm probably not the best person to describe all the science. Cause I'm not <laughs> right No, I'm just curious. But, I mean, but, as, uh, as but, lame uh, in terms as you can, yeah, this is really fascinating. As yeah. As best as I can. Um, but yeah, so like for, for example, on invisible love, um, I have like an intro and an outro and it's where I'm playing all these crystal bowls. And mm-hmm. so you can hear, uh, you can hear the beginning of the album and the end of the album. It kind of like, um, I, I bookend it with the sounds of these bowls, these crystal bowls that are meant to help with that healing aspect. Yeah. That's cool. That is so cool. <laughs> yeah. It really is. Like I've heard of like, yeah, you can, I've seen, even on YouTube, I've seen like, if you're supposed to, you can wear headphones and like these videos will help you like, they'll like 
I don't know. It'll be like these weird high pitched sounds and it's supposed to be like some what healing to your body and like mm -hmm. yeah, different it, frequencies. Yeah, different yeah. frequencies. It'll be like in this your right ear, it's this frequency, in your left ear, it's this frequency, and it's supposed to, mm -hmm. you know, stimulate the vagus nerve or something like yeah, that. It's yeah, like yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. It's I, and I think it's interesting. I feel like it's becoming more and more, you know, like back in the day when like yoga was kind of weird. And mm -hmm. then now yoga is like really normal. Like everyone does yoga. I feel right, like yeah, like the soccer mom down the street is like in yeah, the yoga class, yeah. right? So I feel like that's kind of the same thing with like meditation and and sound therapy and things like that. I feel like people are starting to, um, you know, gravitate towards it and also uh, normalize it. Actually, mm -hmm. I mean, even at my yoga studio that I go to, they they're doing like meditation and breath work and things like that. So, yeah. Wow. That's cool. Where did you learn the sound therapy at? Where is it like a specific country, a specific part of the world that they do this in more so than others? Uh, well, they, I mean, I think they offer it everywhere. They offer, you know, different courses online and things. I mean, I learned specifically, uh, there's one teacher that I had in, in LA, actually, she works specifically with gongs. I don't oh, really work with gongs as much, but I, I did, I did take a course from her where it was all about uh, the sound of gongs. And then I did a course where I learned about the crystal, like crystal bowls in particular. Mm -hmm. Um, and so just like different, yeah, different there's, it's out there. If you look for it, it's out there. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to, after we get off this call, I'm going to just yeah. deep dive into this. Cause it's really interesting. Yeah. So you so used I obviously the crystal bowls on the record, anything else that kind of came from what you had learned? Well, I'm actually also like incorporating it into my live performances as well. So there's like, oh. a, depending on the show and like, I'm, I'm doing a show in Los Angeles that uh, is kind of a, a sort of a more of an experience, a music experience, and it's going to incorporate some of the sound therapy that we're talking about. Wow. People, yeah. People can, I'm actually, I actually did, um, I've been like quietly doing them. Like I did one in Paris. I did one in Ojai and, uh, and they've, they've really, they're really amazing. People come and it's, it's really, I feel like a lot of times when you go to a show, it's like, there's a lot of drinking and there's mm -hmm. people are really standing for a lot. It's like a comfortable, you know, and then you're standing there and you, everyone's like, and so I wanted to create an experience where it was like, I mean, not all of my shows are going to be like this, but you know, I'm, I'm, but I wanted to create an experience where you could come and you could just literally just like relax, lie down. You know, yeah just, that's just a like cool like yeah, concept could, for sure yeah you could watch the show but it's like in this really like comfortable you know you have your own space you know so um so you know everyone has their own yoga mat and you can just like lie there wow. bring your blankets um you know bring your pillows and just get kind of get cozy and just kind of experience music in a little bit of a different way mm -hmm. so because I just feel like for myself, even like there's certain artists that I'll love that I'd want to go see that I love to go see, but sometimes the actual like event of going there and then standing <laughs> next to like 5,000 people, yeah. you're just like really uncomfortable. And so I that's just, me. I'm just yeah, like, no, thanks. <laughs> yeah. So for me, I, you know, and I, I'm not sure how many of these I can do. Cause obviously it requires us to like, have to bring in the whole setup. It's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I'm, I, my goal is to try and incorporate more and more of these kind of shows into my um, live performance, just because I think that they're, you know, it's, it's a nice alternative to what's out there. No, definitely. I think that's such a cool idea. Yeah. So I think it's no, I'm surprised. Like I've never heard of this before. Like, this yeah. is so it, like really, well, really fascinating. Like come to it, my show. I think we're, we're doing one in May. So come to my show in May. Are you, are you in LA? But I'm in Nashville now. I moved. Oh, you did. Oh, yeah. okay. you're not in San Diego anymore. Mm -mm. If okay. I was, I'd come. Cause this is, this sounds really awesome. Yeah. I we're mean, doing it at this cathedral. Really? Yeah, okay. it's a beautiful cathedral near downtown LA. So it's an it's a one night it's a one night performance like a special event. It's good. There's going to be like a meet and greet and reception and everything. But it's going to be yeah. I mean, I I hope to do more of these um in the future. It's, we'll see what happens. Are you the only performer? Do you just do like a long set or how does it work? So for this show coming up, we're gonna I'm gonna have like a string uh tr trio like a, a violinist, a cellist, and a, a viola player. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and it's going to be me playing guitar. One of the string players will, will probably pay, play piano as well, and do some background singing. So it's going to be me plus a few other musicians. Yeah. Amazing. And then that's there'll be a whole aspect of it. That's an actual sound, sound bath. 
there'll be a section of it where you can just like close your eyes and just listen to. It reminds me, or like it kind of, for me, it goes back to what you were talking about in the beginning with the boarding school and just being dark and candlelit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like people yeah. are just sitting in there kind of like absorbing what's happening instead yeah. of like, oh, I've got to worry about this dude next to me. And I got to, like, somebody spilled the drink on me. And like, there's 10 million people around me. Like, it seems like it's just a more of like, go and like you said, relax. And it sounds like that's kind yeah. of how that prayer uh the evening prayer the evening prayer sounded a little bit similar to that yeah i feel like i wanted to create an experience that i actually would like to go to so that's that's my goal you know with these kind of shows is to create this sort of like hybrid wellness sh- mm-hmm. it's like a, it's a music concert but there's kind of like a wellness aspect to it mm-hmm. so yeah i'm super excited about you know offering this to whoever feels inspired to come but <laughs> very cool well that's yeah. that's i think it's an amazing idea and i appreciate you taking time today to to chat with me thank you so much oh my pleasure it was so lovely to meet you and thank you for having me on your show yeah. Yeah. i have one more question for you Susie. i want to know sure. if you have any advice for aspiring artists oh uh yes definitely i mean because i've been independent for a while now so i have i have lots of advice um i think it and i think that it doesn't even really matter whether you're independent or on a major. I think that the more that you can um, understand and learn about entrepreneurship, I think is the way to go. Uh, I feel that what I love to do is write the music, but actually when you're doing it professionally, that's really sort of a small part of, of the bigger picture. And most of it really is learning how to be an entrepreneur and learning how to grow a business and just have those kind of DIY skills to be able to like, you know, obviously when you're independent, your budgets are smaller, you know, there's lots of um, different parameters that you're working with. But I think at the end of the day, if you can understand more about like how to grow a business and how to, um, you know, learn those business skills, I think that that would be really, really helpful for anyone trying to make it in the music business.